Welcome to Friday night's video in our master series. This is the 16th video in our master series and the third video in our editing phase. In the last video we talked about the importance of arrangement and after we get done arranging we basically want to do a little bit of prep. Um, it basically what we want to do is we want to just kind of go through and check the track, do any rendering or normalization and bounces and things like that, check in settings on VST instruments, making a decision whether to render them down to audio or to leave them alone till later, and just kind of going through it, the track itself to just get it prepped so we can do some editing that it's ready to go. I make this an actual process or part of my editing phase so that I try to do as good a, t a job as as I you know on every time I try to do some audio plus some of these things are if I get audio files from someone else sometimes that some of my workflows get a little more complicated because I know I'm not working with my stuff and so I know that I need to check things a little bit better because I didn't record it and I don't know what I need to check to make sure things are okay to when I start to go through the process of the production so basically the first thing we want to do is you know I'll go through and check my pannings volumes and predetermined settings and stereo mono things like that a render effects on track sometimes I might have like effects on a track a guitar and I put a phaser on it you know on the track itself because it made it sound really cool and normally what I will do is I will take that effect and I will pull it off that track save it as a preset and or I'll pull it off the track while I go through this and render and bounce and normalize and things like that because I will go through that some more later in my first phase processing and decide whether I need to adjust that and I may not want to render that on the audio right now or bounce it on the audio so but you can make a decision sometimes I know sometimes I've got a phaser effect on the guitar or something and it's on the track and I did it when I was recording you know and I know that it's going to be that way I don't have no questions so I'll go ahead and bounce it onto there but I'll, we'll go through it in the DAW and then I normalize things. I want to get things normalized so that, you know, my dynamics are set. So my loudest point or close up to zero as possible. And the dynamics are basically set the way they should. I may change this and will probably will when I start mixing. But at first, everything's set like that. That way, those causes we talked about when we were talking about recapturing and the first phase in, in the production of recording that you don't lose harmonic content from things being too quiet. So I'll go through there and normalize things and bounce the files after I've normalized them or either rendering them and bouncing them and normally I'll bounce them also. Command B in my DAW that it goes bounce and bounce it that will render the, the track to have the same name as the, or the, or the event to have the same name as the track and kind of tie them together. So, and it also will remove the normalization check that I'll show you. Now, this process is pretty simple. The only thing you really got to take into consideration is if you've recorded things to where, no, I recorded that quiet because I know that's going to be there. And so I'm not going to fuss with that too much because it's like background vocals behind this vocal, so I don't want to mess with it. Normally, I don't take that in consideration because I figure I'll pull the fader down. I want that normalized and bounced and rendered so that I can make a decision exactly where I want it when I start mixing it. So that's very simple and uh, doing this with the VST instruments and things like that is basically the same concept just to make sure you save you know the instrument settings as a preset and save the MIDI files so that you can go back in this production you can always erase the, the preset and the MIDI files later but for now you might want to go back and go oh I really messed up bro where's that preset I had that VST instrument set up and and where's that MIDI file because <laughs> that's the way I messed with it and then I bounced it and I, that wasn't ain't working real good with this oboe over here so you know that's something to take into consideration so basically looking in the DAW when we start to prep it is the I've got the track and this is the recorded track. This is a file somebody sent me. If it was my file, it'd probably look more like this. 
I mean, it would be set up and it would be normalized pretty well because of the way I showed you in doing the recording phase. But it wasn't. It was brought to me by Bob, and Bob sent me this file. And it looks like this. So basically what I'm doing is I'm going back and checking this. I'm checking my stereo mono, my panning, my volume levels. Anything in here like a time stretch mode, and this DAW is set to sound, not drums or solo on this instance. You know, and checking all the settings to make sure things aren't, you know, set where they're not supposed to be. Delays, overlaps, whatever you might not want going on in there. Making sure that that stuff's all set the way it's supposed to be. We talked about that instance of the VST and saving a preset of that if you're not going to render it and get it off the track for now. You can put it back on there you know later in processing or after we get done with this and i'll go through there and check all this stuff and then i basically want to normalize this track so i can see right now that that's not doing it so i'm basically going to bring this up because i want this normalized up in here you know like when i record so it doesn't have to be all the way up there because i'll fuss with it again later but pretty close normally normalization will do a pretty good job of it but if it's not, then you're going to have to fuss it a different way. That time it did do a good job of it because I fussed around it some. So we've got all these settings set up pretty well. And so basically I've made a decision I'm going to render this on there or I'm taking off there. I've saved this as a preset wherever I got this set. And I'm going to bounce that track. Or I'm just going to render this, transform this to rendered audio. So I've got this transferred to rendered audio. I'm getting a little bit of clipping, so I want to bring this down a little bit. Transferring this to rendered audio, so I've got some good stuff to work with. It's all cleaned up in the track set for when I do editing. So it's done now. So I basically want to go back through there. I want to check, normalize this again to make sure it's normalized. I want to go back through here, make sure all my settings are correct. I've got this time stretch mode. i got to recheck that back to sound. Everything's set pretty well. And then I basically just want to go in here, highlight this at this, and then bounce it. Command B in my DAW. Now it's got the name of the track that's set up, and it's pristine. It's cleaned up. It's normalized. It's good to go. Now, if it doesn't look that way to you, and the normalization isn't doing that, sometimes you recheck that and then bounce it or render it again, or sometimes I'll manually go in there and push that up, listen to the track for the loudest parts, and listen that it's close up to, uh, to 0 dB as possible. And that's basically normalized because when I start editing, that's important that my dynamics are basically the way it was captured so that now I can go to the editing process and do the things we talked about with a good cleaned up track and a good cleaned up event that's prepped and ready to go. So when I'm dealing with a VST instrument, it might be a little bit different. First thing is that, you know, if I'm going to make a decision whether or not I'm going to wait because I might fuss with this more in the processing and or I might fuss with it more in the mixing stage. So most of the time by now, I've got a pretty good understanding of I am or I'm not and, you know, and make that decision. So again, you want to check all the things that we talked about in the last area and then check the VST instrument save the preset of that VST instrument using and the settings you were using you know we'll go for this production for now and save the MIDI file and then normally I'll transform it to audio so at this point I've got it transformed to audio so that I've got some audio to work with and process after I've got this set I go back through and make sure that all my settings on my track are set correct stereo mono pannings volumes all that kind of stuff and then normalize it now sometimes it may normalize it perfect and my DAW there's been some times that it doesn't so once I normalize it I'm gonna command bounce it and the normalization check disappears the track now has the name of whatever track I'm working on all the settings are the way they're supposed to be and it's set up and ready to go great good to work with for editing so those are just normal audio or MIDI files now this pretty simple I try not to get too complicated so you may run in some instances of some other stuff you have to you have to fuss with or because of your DAW that you have to check so you need to check that stuff yourself depending on what piece of software you're using now in the case of multi instruments that I don't know if you have a multi instrument but in my dive it's multi instrument so I've got 
five different VST instruments acting as one that I was using to build this sound for something I was working on. In this case, it was a choir, and I've got five different instances of these synthesizers and a smoothing distortion that I used to make this really cool sound and background choir. Now, the only difference here is when you render this, you're going to have maybe five different files that are already blended at certain levels that and pannings and all kinds of things that you had set. So basically you got to be really sure of that before you do that because if you go back and start trying to mess with the panning and the volumes and stuff, you already fussed with it up to at this point to get a really good sound that you might not want to fuss with. So you're not going to want to normalize that and things like that. But you'd want to again highlight the, the event and command bounce it so each one of them have the name of whatever they were because on this instrument one of the tracks would be called three octave choir one of them would be named main voice one of them would be named ooze and a mix and those ones you'd want the events to have the name of the track so you just want to command bounce those so without maybe fussing with them and normalizing them because you've already set the volumes and pannings and things like that on the instruments themselves if you had the actual instrument here you've already set up that instrument itself you've already set up that instrument itself kind of where you wanted it so you don't really want to fuss with it so but you have to kind of make a determination of that now at this point we basically have got our tracks that they're basically prepped and ready to go and this might sound a little funny you have this a, a separate step but depending on whether you're working with your stuff or somebody else's stuff then it's a good you know process and procedure to follow that way you just double check things make sure you're good to go so i mean editing can be fun enough ha 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 that you know depending on whose stuff you're working with that it's really prepped well so that you know you don't have to worry about it you know that everything's set the way it's supposed to be and you're ready to go and doing some editing so peace out love i hope you enjoyed this third video and our editing phase and i'll see you in the next video when we're actually editing some audio